Come on in. It's another follow-up session, and we have Lisa back. And Lisa's our tennis player who had a lot of work on her ACL over the years, and it was causing pain. And so let's check in. How are you doing? I actually think I'm doing much better. I think the swelling's gone down a little bit, and mainly the pain has gone down a lot. So you're still playing? I'm still playing. Coaching? Coaching. Are you having to ice it as much? I am having to ice it as much. Um, okay. And I definitely um, find it painful if I like play golf or I hike or something. I do a little something new. Okay. It definitely is more sore. But that's good that you're doing things that I'm are new. I'm finally doing more things that are new. Okay. So that's often what we find when we clear away the base pain is people can start doing other things or more of. So um, we will check to see what else we um, can put together uh, with that knee and the transitions around the knee. And um, anything else How with everything you're doing? Uh, just It connects to my back, which definitely hurts um, and has been hurting even before the last session. Um, so my low back on my left side, my kind of shoulder blade on my left side and my neck on my left side. They're kind of all connected, I'm sure, and they okay. all hurt. I think last time we found her left shoulder was a little stiff too, and um, she's had some surgery there and uh, with um, some interventions, so I think that might be a little bit to play, but um, I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll check and see how you're moving and um, what's going on more with that left knee and the different, some more complex transitions for it and uh, and go from there see how that might play into further up um, so by the way i'm kara lindell and i'm the founder of the bridging institute and the bridging technique where we're using the physics of the body the little micro movements on how uh, movement is transitioning and flowing to allow you to move um, so let's start with just where we Want to see how are you moving when you're standing up? That is super easy and smooth. And then turning, same thing. And what's really nice is there's just this um, spring back, and it just it seems very elastic. And it wasn't really like that last no, time. It definitely wasn't. So so that's a fluency that, and I just barely push forward, and you stop yourself and just come back to center. So. Your body's just really nicely recentering itself. It's lovely. Okay. Um, sit down. Let's make sure that when you're sitting, everything's good. And excellent. So I feel a little stiffness on the left side of her core. When I push from the right, there's a nice bounce. When I come from the left, there's none. Um, if I turn, that seems pretty similar. But if I hold in the middle, you don't turn here. He's all, you've also had some surgery the, around that level. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we have, uh, have something to say with that. So even if the knee is doing fine, sometimes if um, the left side of you, the left hip, if that's a little stuck, um, that's going to actually put some stress at your knee. So um, go on your back. Let's, and let's just check and see if legs are moving. Um, right's a little bit more than the left, but they're not terribly different. Um, that's easy. Good. And then I'm just going to bend. Good. So what I like is when it straightens, it feels like there's a little bounce, um, that it, and it, it's appropriate. It doesn't feel like it's going to hyperextend. Um, just for, yeah, and that one does too. Okay, let's see what's going on at the hip. Not much. But this one... There is. So I, you know, you're getting some stress up in that lower back. Um, so I think that maybe that might be a place where we need some more movement. But let's also check about the shoulders. So I'm just going to give this one a wiggle. So have you been playing golf? I have. Okay. And is that not new, new, but you're just doing more of it? More of it. I hadn't done it in a month and a half. And I've played a half a dozen times now. Excellent. And I'm going to grab an arm and a leg. I'm going to turn you toward me. Very nice. And let's see what the other side does, because I suspect we're going to be trying to figure out that left side. Ha, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So here's what I want you to do. I want you to roll on your side. I'm going to give you a pillow. Um, face that way. And we're going to support your leg. And I want to look also at um, just some transitions. And the support is going to allow. Yeah, your hip, I'm turning your leg and you're connecting across your knee so that would be one concern is does it get stuck but you're connecting through the knee you're just not moving up here okay so no any injuries here any no okay. <laughs> that, that was safe it's just the, the, but we do know there's been oh my gosh okay so this doesn't move at all um so Normally, my rule of thumb is work from what moves unless we've got a trauma that we need to support. And we've got some trauma up here um, with uh, post-surgical uh, stuff. So let's, we're going to use one of our little peanut balls. We're going to support that. Um, so in, our incisions around the bottom. Okay. So just relax your arm. I'm just going to support. And when um, there's surgery, what that does besides the actual trauma of cutting and moving, um, it all heals, but often the, the muscles, the fascia, the uh, skin, it just, it, the um, flow of how movement crosses through, it's kind of like putting a sandbar in there or a stick. Um, you know, it just, it's, just can't move across that. And so by supporting it, Kind of, literally, that's our name, bridging. Um, it provides a bridge to help connect the two areas so that they can move together again. And that feels like it's softening up. And so in your surgery, you also had some lymph node removal. Was it right. through here? Yes. Okay. So we're going to, it's funny, that seems to be what gives people a lot of tightness in the few, uh, after surgery. So I'm just going to support. Add some little wiggles so that those areas can remember how to work together again. And, yeah, and let that just kind of glide back. And there. So I'm holding behind her shoulder and matching up the whole front and the back so this whole upper area can start moving again and just guiding it and um, matching up everything. It's not any particular one muscle. It's the whole group of how they should be um, transitioning with each other. There we go. And guess what just started to move? Your hip. So as your shoulder is moving and this, your rib cage starts to move, which probably is actually your spine turning. Um, then you start moving here. So I'm gonna hold a little bit further down. Let's make sure we connect up from your upper part of your torso and your whole rib cage. And that is starting to move really nicely. Oh, look, it's getting, <laughs> it's unpacking. I think it's been protecting. <laughs> there, okay. So let's, let's see. That whole side is moving and look at that. Now we have a hip that moves too. So let's see how that connects up from your pelvis down to the actual hip joint and see if we can get your foot to turn your knee to turn your hip. So I'm going to support back here, even though you don't have a specific trauma or anything. Um, there, I'm just gonna use this to help connect the big pieces. And, okay, did you just feel it relax? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna turn, oh, look at that, your hips moving. Wow. Wow. I'm going to take this away and we're going to look at that. It's actually moving pretty nicely. Um, so with the surgery at the knee and all the different interventions there, your knee is hanging together pretty nicely. I'm just taking it through a few more transitions 
And we're going to rotate your hip out and see if your knee can follow with that. Very nice. Feels pretty smooth. Do you feel mm -hmm. any little catches? No. No, it feels very good. So once she's got movement in the upper part of her body and down to her pelvis and hip, I'm just guiding her knee to help refresh all these different transitions that it hasn't been able to go through for quite a while. And it's just, it's very easily turning from in to out. <laughs> um, and I'm also bringing her leg back further and further. So if you're running, your leg comes behind you. It's called extension. And you want to make sure your knee transitions there too. Very nice. Okay. Really up and back. Anything feel stuck? No, it feels great. It's so easily. Whee. Okay, I'm just going to circle around, kind of playing around, because I want to just see is there anywhere that um, the transition gets hung up or isn't smooth. And so far, it's figuring it out pretty well. The only part is when you come down in here, it hurts there. Right here. Okay, so we're going to support that and kind of. Slow it down, come around. Is that okay? Yep. All right. Ah, I can feel it. There's just a little, when we come down, her foot kind of comes up and there's a little bit of stress right in this area. So let's take it through that a couple of times. The only time in real life you'd probably be doing this is swimming. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you're active, so that's fair game. Yeah. No, and I do swim laps, so. When you're on vacation, you might do more. <laughs> People, when they uh, go snorkeling or uh, they go scuba diving and they have fins on, um, there's a lot of stress at knees. Okay, let's just double check this whole left side. Very nice. This is still moving. Everything as a whole moves. So um, turn back on your back and let's just see. Now, good, and so much easier. Yeah. This, this one actually feels nice too, um, even easier than before. Um, let me. What feels better is right over here on my side. Oh, nice. Let's make sure that they feel like they are equal in how they're turning. Um, I want you to take each one, just lift it and bend it, because I want to make sure they feel similar. Okay, good. And then let's check the shoulder. Gosh, it's so easy. And how that connects in. I think this one is okay, but let's just double check. Yeah, very nice. All right, let's see how you turn. Oh gosh, it's so smooth. And let's check this one. Okay, that's much nicer. So sit up. And then I'm going to let you stand, and let's, you're fine. Okay, so we're going to see if, there we go. Super fluent, and it's bigger motions right. instead of just a small uh, range of motion. And that is two. Um, is there anything that you would know, like a squat or a lunge or anything that you want to test to see how it, it's working? I can squat. Let's see. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Oh, it's much better. So I get to here, and now it hurts. Okay. That's better. No, so, so, yeah. It, it should actually get a little bit more range over the next couple of days. Okay, great. So, um, great. So, really interesting example of how um, where we think because of the ACL that there's still some impact of that, uh, where actually the stress on the knee is from the hip. But the hip being stuck is not from the hip. It's actually from all the trauma that had been in the upper uh, part of her body. So, yeah, no, this gets so much better. Oh, good. <laughs> Always hurts, but now it doesn't. Oh, well, hopefully that'll even over the next couple of days uh, still even feel better, too. Um, so uh, for those of you at home, um, this may have seemed not quite as simple as some of the other times. Uh, but this is part of our problem solving and process that we go through that we teach. Um, the information for that's in the show notes. And if you have had um, a surgery or treatments that are leaving you stiff and achy and pain in pain and you want to be active again, um, 
you can uh, schedule in our office or do a virtual session with us. And the information for that's on our website. So if you like this episode, give us a thumbs up, subscribe so that you get the next um, episode as it comes out. And Lisa, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.